Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I have part 11 of my second impressions video. I have made a playlist of all the second impressions videos I've ever done. So the first 10, I will keep adding them to that collection. So you can check out that playlist if you've missed any. I know a bunch of you have really enjoyed these second impressions videos. You look forward to them. So there's a playlist there if you've missed any, but we are gonna get into number 11. I have a whole bunch of fragrances to share. I kind of had so many other videos that I was making that I haven't made second impressions videos in a while. So I'm gonna have a couple coming up in the next month or so, but these 10, I think, fragrances are all ones that you've heard of in other videos since I've hauled them or um, you know, first impression hauled them, but now it's like they're official. What I think about them, has anything changed? from when I hauled them, and yeah, let's get into it. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. My Instagram will be in the description box below as well if you wanna check it out, and let's get started. So the first one, I feel like I'm just gonna get it out of the way. You've heard about it time and time again, but I haven't done a full first, second impressions on it, is This Is Her by Zedek and Voltaire. I've talked to so many of you guys about it in the comments and in other videos. I liked it when I first hauled it. I definitely did. I was expecting not to, but I did and I still do. I'm up to here on it now, if I'm seeing correctly, yeah. And that's crazy because I have so many fragrances and I've made a pretty good dent in this. And there's just something about the sprayer, I think, that even though it seems like it's short, you just, you end up going through it. It's beautiful. It is, from what I can tell, and now having, you know, had it for a longer amount of time and seeing all of your comments and other videos on it, it is a bit polarizing. So I would say it isn't blind by safe. Personally, for me, it was, but I know I'm a little bit out there with blind buying in general. It isn't blind by safe um, because there are definitely people who are sensitive to the notes in this or that get a metallicness, or that are just really put off by it. For me, it's so creamy, so delicious, so just inexplainably beautiful that I don't really ever wanna be without this. And I can see myself going through it because I'm already going through it so quickly. I love the bottle as well. I think I mentioned it in my haul video. That hasn't changed either. The bottle is very, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing for me. And I love this side that isn't smooth. I love the smooth side. I really love everything about it. And I'm really happy to have picked up 100 mil. I don't always feel that way as I'm blind buying and shopping, especially with a collection of my size. But for this one, I'm super happy. The next one, again, I've talked about a lot, won't spend a lot of time on. Virgin Island Water by Creed. I... I uh, bought this after I had tried a decant from Royalty Sense, which I love Royalty Sense, and it just convinced me that this was full bottle worthy. I have been spraying it off of the bottle, which I just tell myself, you know, try to get through the decant first. Why are you cracking into it? But sometimes I will spray off this, sometimes I'll use the decant, and yeah, I really do love it. It's kind of out of season technically now, but even in September I was using this a whole bunch on the hotter days and I can see myself on the days where I'm just in the mood for more of a summery scent going back to this. But yeah, love it. Loved it from first impression to first buying the bottle and I still love it now. Then we have Amber Oud Rouge by Al Haramain. I talked about this in a couple videos too, honestly. And it, this is one of those dupe fragrances for Baccarat Rouge 540. I'm going to save, I think, my full review and talk about all the kind of dupes that I've tried and my discussion for a video I will do. It's going to be going on my channel on October 30th, um, so keep your eyes open for that. I know some people are just completely over it and I totally get that, but if you want a full comprehensive view of just my opinions, what I've seen, what I've experienced including Amber Oud Rouge, then keep your eyes peeled for October 30th where I'm gonna do a full video on that. But basically, um, in terms of the bottle, I don't, I don't think I regret it in that, you know, I'd like rush to return it, 
but I've just tried so many dupes at this point or even fragrances that kind of have a vibe but aren't dupes that I'm not sure I really need all. Actually, I'm, I am sure that I don't need all of the fragrances I do have, but the silver lining is that I can talk about it more in that video on the 30th, so keep your eyes open for that. Then the next one I just love, and I was actually just wearing it yesterday again. This is Valentina Poudre by Valentino. Oh my god, I just love this. I've actually kept this little tester, well not, it isn't for testers, you guys told me it's for all bottles, but this kind of faux cap thing, which I didn't keep for another one of my tester bottles, but I actually don't mind keeping it and it kind of keeps it a little more safe, I suppose. But I really love this. It is very, very, I'm gonna spray this a little. It's very um, makeup powdery, vintage makeup powder, and I, I absolutely adore it. I think it's really, really beautiful. A lot of people had re recommended this to me for kind of years, actually, even before I had my YouTube channel, because they knew I was into you know, powdery fragrances, and it was one of those ones that I just kept putting off and would try more obscure powdery fragrances and not this one, and I, I'm glad I gave in because that was insanity. It is beautiful and really, really nice. I haven't really changed my opinion on that one. I think I liked it from the get-go. If anything, I'm just even more into it now, honestly. I find myself going to it pretty often. The next one, and I do not hear enough people talking, or I haven't heard anyone else talk about this on YouTube, but if there are, then there's not enough hype around this. This is Mega Flower Eau de Parfum Dry Waters by um, Hermetica. And this is actually a natural perfume and it is kind of oily as well. It's not a it's not a perfume oil, but when you spray it and you kind of rub it into your skin, it isn't just alcoholy because it's alcohol free. Um, and so it has like a slight oil to it, maybe just like the slightest, not even a sheen, but you can rub it into your arm or wherever you're spraying it rather than, you know, a full spray. And I have really, really come to like this. I will say, because when I was hauling it, I kind of felt that it had Armani Code Cashmere vibes, and it does. They don't smell similar in that you could, you know, smell one and be like, oh, perfect dupe, it's done. This is exactly that. It's definitely not, but if you like Armani Code Cashmere, Armani Code Satin, even I guess to a certain extent, original Armani Code, it's got an element of that to it, and I just kind of get in the mood of wearing this one. I've been wearing it a lot to uh, bed, actually, because it's alcohol-free, and I feel like it, I don't know, it's a little bit more soothing, I suppose, but it isn't one that just dissipates either. I really have not heard a lot of talk around Hermetica, but I just had seen a bunch of their fragrances go on sale, on fragrance by a while ago and I decided to pick up Mega Flower based on the notes and I have not regretted it so far. I've really really gotten into it and in terms of bottle stuff, I don't really have any bottles that are this kind of deep forest green I think so it's really nice and the cap is really heavy. It's really really well made so check out their website. They're pretty cool and yeah, I definitely recommend it. I mean definitely have a feel to see if you like those kinds of fragrances because if you don't like Armani Code Cashmere type fragrances, you won't like this, but they're not, you know, essentially a dupe of one or the other, so definitely recommend. So then we move on to one I won't spend a lot of time on. I've talked about it a bunch. Iris Prima by Penhaligans. It's kind of a perfect fall, winter iris. It's got suede, which I've really, really gotten into, and I'm just really enjoying it. I feel like this is also the perfect amount for me, 50 male, because I will easily wear this without I just without feeling like I don't know I've got way too much to get through but it's beautiful totally totally beautiful I have not been let down by Penhaligon so far so love that on the other hand a fragrance that did I don't want to say let me down but I just really have not been wearing at all is Blanc Violette by Histoire de Parfum and this I'd gotten the tester bottle so the notes are on the side 
And based on the notes, you guys, this was like quintessential me because it was violet in every stage. It was violet, bergamot, iris in the heart, violet, ylang, ylang, and anise. And then in the base, violet, uh, sandalwood, vanilla, musk, and rice powder. Stunning, right? You would think totally up my alley. And I'd never tried anything from Histoire de Parfum. So I was already intrigued. This was a tester bottle, so it was in more sale. And it has like all the notes here on French. Obviously I translated them, but I just thought it'd be perfect. And honestly, I'll just spray it a little to remind myself. It's not bad. It's just, it's a little bit dated. And usually that doesn't, you know, deter me. I've definitely liked dated fragrances or vintage -y, but it's dated in like a, it smells a little too floral and that is something I really never say because I also love floral fragrances but it it has like this I don't know this kind of like green airiness where it smells like violet and ylang ylang and anise and what have you but it smells very floral and airiness of it it doesn't I don't get any rice powder I know it's in the base but even in the base it just kind of smells like those florals if there was like a bunch of bunch of dew if they were super kind of wet I suppose and there's no real freshness from the bergamot it doesn't cut through that there's definitely no powderiness from any from the flowers or from I don't get any rice powder which I love that note when it really shows up in other fragrances and there's a bit of anise, which I, I know isn't everyone's cup of tea, but this is a whole, it's a tester bottle, so it wasn't that expensive, but this is like the 100 mil big size, 120 mil, sorry, and I'm never going to get through this. This is going to be one where I'm going to have to spray on like my couch or as air freshener, which is so sad to do, but I'm going to see if there's like a friend or family member that really likes this and they can kind of use it up and give me back the bottle uh, obviously for my collection because it's I really really wanted to like this and it's strange for me not to like a violet fragrance it happens every once in a while and unfortunately this was one of them so I'll give myself a little break from it I have been um, giving myself a break from it to see if I change my mind because it isn't one I hate it's just it's not meeting the mark and when I have other fragrances that I just adore I'm not going to reach for something time and time again that I'm not enjoying. So that was a bit disappointing. Then one that kind of flipped the other way for me in my first impressions, I was like, eh, kind of not at all feeling it. And then I thought maybe it's a little better. And now I really like, this is Adam Levine. I think it's just women for women. And I still hate the bottle. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Absolutely hate the bottle, but it has, and not really in the air, but once you get it on your skin, not at the start, but a little bit into it, maybe even like two, three, definitely if you give it even more minutes, like five minutes, it warms up. It has a touch of um, true lust to it in that true lust can be like it warms up and it gets like a animalic powder. This has, yeah, I mean, I definitely prefer true lust to Adam Levine's for her, but there is an element to this when I get that, like it's already starting to happen, but definitely a couple minutes in, oh my God, it completely changed the game for me. And I really did like it. Again, I, I never look up what the perfume is, but you guys told me that it's kind of a dupe for one of the Tom Fords and Adam Levine was into that. So whatever, that's kind of where he drew inspiration from. I don't know which one that is. And I don't remember if I smelled it, I'm not huge into Tom Ford um, yet anyways, but I really did like this and I'll definitely be wearing it. And it's kind of, as you guys know, if you've been watching, True Lust is one of my ride or die top threes. So anything that kind of has like an element to that to it, totally love and I'm really into. So that's great. Now flipping back again to one that was, again, I don't hate, but it was disappointing and I kind of prepared myself for this. so. It was less disappointing than Blanc Violette. This is my Burberry from Burberry and I just heard so much hype around this and my Burberry Black. 
Um, and I kept seeing it and I thought, no, no, no. And then I saw it at Marshall's one day and I just bit the bullet. And again, I don't hate it, but it's not anything especially surprising or I don't know, out of the box. And maybe it's just because expectations were too high, but it's, it's a floral, it's kind of green, which that's the part that kind of puts me off, but it's not bad. Like it's definitely a really pretty scent. I would say it's kind of like great. I mean, wear whatever you want at any age, but this just evokes for me like a 30 flirty and thriving kind of fragrance age range. Um, it's fun and it's not too serious or trying to be anything spectacular, but at the same time, it's not anything particularly spectacular. And I'll wear it, like I'll definitely wear it from time to time, but from what I'd heard and the hype being what it was, for me it's just kind of middle of the road type fragrance. So yeah, maybe it, when I'm trying to find someone in my family that likes this, they'll like this as well because I actually do like the bottle, it's not bad, the cap's kind of cheap, but the bottle's nice and I will like them a lot more if someone else uses like 80% 80, 80 of it and then I just have the end to kind of enjoy and keep the bottle. Then the last one is actually Cashmere Aura, I think it's what it's called. Yeah, Cashmere Aura by Donna Karen. Bottle-wise, I just have to say, this will drive me insane. I don't like to get nitpicky with bottles, and I really don't, but if you're not going to click into place, it's just insanity, because you can't pick it up by the cap comfortably, because you always feel like it's going to fall off. But with the, if you have a collection where, you know, your fragrance is behind one another, like I do, that's infuriating. You can't reach down here and the cap is so truly light as a feather plastic. So that aside, fragrance wise, I will spray, I'm kind of running out of room here, right here. I've definitely worn this. It's very, it's very clean, kind of laundry like, a little, you know, like white musk powdery. Even for me, that I'm so into those kinds of fragrances, this is nice, but it's not really breaking any boundaries. I have worn it. I'm gonna try to layer it with some things and then make it more interesting for myself. Even, maybe I'll try to layer these two together because that might be interesting. Uh, yeah, I like it. I wouldn't absolutely say recommend that you have to rush out and get it, but from what I remember um, ages ago smelling the absolute original, I feel like this is a little bit easier to wear, but now I'm kind of probably forgetting what the OG smells like. Bottle-wise, not a fan, but scent-wise, if you're into kind of white musk clean scents, then it's not a bad one. It's actually not a bad one. So yeah, that was my second impressions video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know which one of these you're interested in, which one of these you want to try or you have tried. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye!